Even when I'm down Got my head in the clouds And my feet on the ground I got big dreams Gonna make them true Hello today and welcome to the Genius Lab, where we help you realize your greatness. Toby Christensen here, your self-empowerment trainer, and we are going to help train you to be self-empowered today. We're going to teach you how to let go of the load. And uh, this seems like simple and obvious. When I was writing this book, uh, Release Your Shit and Reclaim Your Power, um, I was looking at at the situations that would come up over and over again with different clients. And I realized that I I do some of this shit myself. (laughs) And so it was funny because some things seem like they would be so obvious, but at the same time, we get we get caught in some kind of dumb fuckery or mind trickery or something that makes us think that it's okay to hold on to shit and that, and that it doesn't have a consequence. So my question to you is if you're, if your hands are filled with shit, how can you pick up the gold? We're we're always looking to make our lives better. We're looking to be empowered. We're looking to be able to manifest what we want in our lives. And, and when we can't, you got to look at the fact that if you're holding on to a bunch of shit, you are not going to be able to get, grab the gifts and the wonderful things that, that you want to create in your life because your energy is going elsewhere. Now, a lot of people go, well, I'm not holding on to shit. Well, dude, of course you are, or you would be where you wanted to be. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> if you if you were set up to have what you want, you would have it. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I, I had to come to that point myself. I'm like, if I really look at my life, Jesus, I'm I'm way off base. And so I had to work through this stuff. But this is where it comes from. This is like real shit that people deal with. And the the thing that I discovered is most of the um most of the things that that I was carrying, most of the blame and shame and victim consciousness and the bullshit. of it was subconscious. So I could identify small portions of things that needed to change in my life. But boy, I really had to go deep into the energetic world to, to realize that if I let my outside world be a reflection of what my inward condition is, I need to look at my outside world for the clues. And then I can begin to come conscious of the things that I have been unconscious of that have created this fucked up situation and uh, get, get it changed. Okay. So there's, there's three primary aspects of yourself that are most common in terms of creating problematic dysfunction in your life. Okay. The first and most important factor is your mind. Okay. Most of what you worry, think about this. Most of what you worry about never actually happens. Okay. And think about that. Like how many times have you worried about, oh my God, what's going to happen when I get home or, or, uh, did I pass the test or the, did I I pass the bar exams or, you know, whatever it is that you were freaked out about and that you worried about. But, you know, most of what you think about never, ever happens. Yet worry often occupies, I mean, it occupies an insane amount of your time and, and of your brain power. So not everyone has this issue, but so far, everyone that I've met actually does. <laughs> I haven't met anybody that doesn't, but perhaps there's someone that doesn't. When your mind is full of shit, how can you create anything new? You won't, okay? And th- and and th- that's the that's the important thing is that when your mind is 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 in worry mode, it's in gridlock mode, it's in negativity mode, and what you focus on you feed, and it's a big fucking loop that just screws you over and over and over again and not in the good way. So, let's look at worry. So what is worry about? You know, when I started thinking about that, I started thinking, you know, what, what is the shit that I worry about? What do I occupy my mind with? And I realized that I torture myself a lot with worrying about the past, things that I've done. 
okay? And I agonize about these things sometimes. Now, I'm way better than I was, but I used to feel really, really guilty about stuff that I've done because I'm kind of a wild and crazy guy, and I've done some wild and crazy things, and not all of them have uh, had the best results, let's just say. So, you know, sometimes, uh, what, do you, what do you worry about in terms of the past? You know, have you taken advantage of someone? Have you done some criminal activity um, that maybe you got, maybe you didn't get caught for and you were afraid you will, or maybe you did get caught and you're afraid your employer will find out? It's, uh, you know, what, what do you worry about? What happened in the past? What have you lied about? What, do you, what did you cheat on? Have you stolen something from someone? Okay. Sometimes it's about, you know, it's, it's about significant things and it's about un, insignificant things. Okay. So th- the thing that you want to get over is, is the, the victimization of the past. Okay. You are no longer a victim of anything that happened in the past. Now, you may, maybe you need to clear something up. Maybe you need to bring reciprocity. Um, You know, that's up to you. But the main thing is be in the now. Okay. Sometimes we worry, we get pissed off because, you know, people do stuff to us. Sometimes it's things we do. Sometimes it's things people do, do to us. And so anytime that you're dwelling in the past, you know, they shouldn't have done that or whatever. You can't shoulda, okay? And dwelling on the past is like carrying a hundred pound anchor on your back every day, all the time, everywhere you go, okay? It doesn't always stop you completely. Like I could probably carry a hundred pound anchor for a while, but it would be, it would be a burden for sure, okay? Even think about, think about going to the airport and you have a layover and you have to take your bag or your backpack and walk all over the freaking airport with it. Okay. It's not very heavy, but it doesn't take long for your shoulders to start hurting or your back to hurt. So this is what worries about only it's a hundred times worse because most of the time when we worry, we're occupying a hundred percent of our mind and that wears us down. Okay. It is, uh, it is some fucked up shit. That's all I can say. So worry from the past is, is it's a pointless thing. Okay. So the, th- the question I would ask you, if this is something you suffer with, and, and of course I have for a long time, um, is what can you do today to make an impact that will help undo whatever it is that's messing you up from the past. Okay. Maybe it's just you, you behave differently. Maybe you're polite to people. Um, you know, maybe you look at your, maybe you look at the thing that happened instead of being fucked up and saying, Oh, you know, I'm a victim because this person did this thing to me. Maybe you use it, you, you know, you use it as a, as a lesson, And it becomes powerful. I I knew this one guy who was a, uh, he was bullied in high school. And uh, he used that bullying instead of giving up and and rolling over. He used that bullying to inspire him to become a a world famous kickboxer. And he's now a stuntman in Hollywood. He's been in 57 movies, TV shows, um, all kinds of stuff. He's, he's, acted with Robert De Niro and some, some big time people. And, uh, you know, the thing that he did was he, he did what we call a content reframe rather than I got bullied and I'm, and I don't deserve this and, and fuck everybody. He's, he looked at it and he's like, this is never going to happen again. And I'm going to take steps to make sure that it doesn't. So he started taking martial arts. <laughs> and it was funny because I was there on his 50th birthday when his perpetrator showed up at the restaurant where we were. We were having a big party there, right? And kind of a restaurant bar place. And he comes over and he's like, Toby, that's the guy. I'm like, what guy? He said, that's the guy that beat me up in high school. That's the guy that used to bully me in the locker room. I'm going to go talk to him. And I said, no, 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 don't go kick his ass. He says, no, I'm going to go thank him. 
I'm going to thank him so much for what he did because he's the one that inspired me to take up martial arts and to become who I am today. So it's it's pretty cool. Now, the other thing that that's a, that's a pretty pretty blatant, pretty advanced uh, form of, of content reframe. A lot of times when we worry about things, um, let's just, let's say you worry incessantly at work about your boss. Maybe you're afraid that you haven't done things uh, good enough or whatever. And uh, your, your boss calls you in and wants to talk to you or you get that, you get that email. It's time for you to come into my office and you go, oh shit. I always hate that when people do that. We need to talk. I'm, I all automatically go to, what did I do that was wrong? <laughs> so yeah, I still have work to do. Uh, but, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a content reframe exercise that uh, NLP teaches uh, is when you're afraid of someone, let's just use your boss, for example, instead of going into your boss uh, and, and looking at him as a, as a great white shark, like this, this really powerful being that could potentially rip you to shreds, um, when you walk in the room, immediately put a dunce cap on his head, white paint, uh, uh, clown paint on his face, a big smile, a big red fuzzy nose, and um, big giant puffy ha- uh, gloves on his hands. And then think of your thing as you're looking at him. Think then of this music playing in the background. You know, circus music. You know, and you're and you're and you're hearing this funky pipe organ, and you're seeing this big red dun big red nose and dunce cap and big white smiley face and. Y- you have to be careful not to laugh, okay? But what it does, it takes the intimidation away because it shifts the content of your of your mind. It shifts the content of your of your perception, and then it allows you to have a different frame of mind when you're dealing with a particular situation. So, um, you know, there, there's a couple of sayings uh, about worry. Uh, that I think is is funny. I'm I'm not saying don't worry. Worry all you want, okay? And my question is, how's that working for you? <laughs> and uh, so there's a, a an old saying that worry uh, never robs tomorrow of its sorrow; it only saps today of its joy. And and I like that. And then and then there's a quote by Mark Twain, something about. Uh, I'm a I'm an old man who has spent much time worrying about things that never happened, and uh, so when you think about um, about when you think about worry, when you think about letting go of the load, everything that you do when you engage in worry is disempowering. I, I talk, I teach when I'm teaching my, uh, my self empowerment courses, I talk about power, positive and power, negative moves and worry is definitely a power negative move. It rarely helps anything. And it almost always stagnates progress. So think about that for a bit. Let go of the load, let go of the load of worry the past, the future. We'll get into that in the next, uh, in the next podcast where we'll talk about worry about the future and uh, the ways that we have a tendency to fuck ourselves over by putting attention and energy towards things that we can't do anything about. So by all means, worry if you'd like, but I recommend not, and have fun and What you focus on, you feed, so keep looking up.